Today's space news is more exciting than ever. China is pushing the boundaries of its space program by expanding the Tiangong Space Station, while Rocket Lab is preparing to take on SpaceX with bold new ambitions. Meanwhile, NASA is facing a frustrating new issue with its Viper Moon rover project. Let's start with China's major announcement, which has taken the international space community by surprise. The Chinese Space Agency has officially confirmed its intention to double the size of the current Tiangong Space Station. This isn't just a minor upgrade, it's a full-scale expansion that would significantly increase China's presence in low Earth orbit and change the dynamics of space competition in the years ahead. Tiangong, currently composed of three main modules, has been operational for a couple of years and is one of only two space stations currently orbiting Earth. The other, of course, is the International Space Station. Although the ISS is much larger, Tiangong has one major advantage. It's newer. The technology on board the Chinese station is roughly 20 years more advanced than what's on the ISS, simply because it was built more recently. However, despite this edge, the small size of Tiangong has been a limitation. Its current configuration only allows three astronauts to live and work on board for long-term missions, and that restricts the number of experiments, research and maintenance activities that can be carried out at one time. According to recent reports from Chinese state media, the existing station is already struggling to meet growing demands for scientific research. More experiments mean more space and more energy are required. China is realizing that their ambitions in space will require a more capable orbital platform. That's why they're launching an expansion plan that will nearly double the station's internal volume, from about 20% of the ISS's size to roughly 40%. This isn't just a symbolic move, it's a practical step forward that will significantly increase their operational capacity in space and help accommodate more astronauts, more experiments and eventually more international partners. Phase 1 of the Tiangong project came together remarkably quickly. The three modules that currently make up the station were all launched and assembled in just two years, 2021 and 2022. That pace is impressive by any standard, especially for a program still relatively new to operating a full-scale space station. Now with the next phase on the horizon, China plans to add three more modules. The first new module will be what's called a multi-docking adapter. This device has six connection ports and will attach to the bottom of the current central module, known as Tianha. This base forms the center of the existing T-shaped configuration in orbit and currently hosts a single port for cargo resupply ships. This new multi-port adapter will serve as a kind of hub, mimicking the structure that connects the current modules. Once it's installed, the layout of the station will evolve into something resembling two T-shapes stacked on top of each other, giving the space station a much more complex and capable structure. By doubling the number of modules, China won't just increase interior space, they'll also gain more docking ports. That's important because the Chinese space program is developing two new crewed spacecraft. One is designed for missions to the moon, while the other will be used specifically for operations in low Earth orbit such as ferrying astronauts and cargo to Tiangong. Expanding the number of docking ports means more flexibility. Crewed spacecraft, cargo resupply vehicles, and future international visitors will have more access points. That ties into another major component of China's long-term plan, international collaboration. Earlier this year, China's Human Spaceflight Agency revealed that it is training astronauts from Pakistan for a future mission to Tiangong. If successful, these would be the first foreign astronauts to visit the Chinese station. Beyond that, Chinese officials have indicated that they're in talks with multiple other countries about sending astronauts to Tiangong, although no specific agreements have been made public yet. Despite the ambitious plans, China hasn't released an exact timeline for when these new modules will launch. However, they've confirmed that the Long March 5B rocket will continue to be used for these missions. That rocket played a key role in launching the first phase of Tiangong, but it also sparked controversy. The Long March 5B became infamous for its uncontrolled re-entry events. Unlike many other space launch vehicles, the first stage of the Long March 5B doesn't separate cleanly and fall into the ocean like conventional rockets. Instead, the entire core stage ends up in low orbit around Earth, where it slowly loses altitude and eventually crashes back into the atmosphere, sometimes overpopulated areas. This issue isn't just theoretical, it's happened multiple times. Flaming debris from previous launches has rained down unpredictably, causing concern among international space agencies and governments. The Chinese Space Agency has acknowledged the problem. In a recent interview, a Chinese official stated that their current focus is on enhancing reliability and safety, specifically mentioning efforts to improve controlled re-entry through design optimizations. 
While it's encouraging that they are working on this, the statement wasn't exactly comforting. The risk remains, especially if future launches increase in frequency as Tiangong expands and China's space ambitions grow. Although we don't yet know when the next core module will fly, we do know what the next Long March 5B launch will carry, and it's not another habitat. Instead, the next scheduled flight will deliver something very exciting, China's first space telescope. This new telescope is designed to orbit very close to the Tiangong station so that it can be easily serviced by astronauts through spacewalks. That kind of flexibility is similar to how NASA once maintained the Hubble Space Telescope using the Space Shuttle. In terms of size, China's telescope will be comparable to Hubble, featuring a 2-meter-wide primary mirror capable of capturing incredibly detailed images of the universe. But even more important than size is the fact that China's telescope benefits from 30 years of technological advancement compared to Hubble. While Hubble is still performing well today it was launched in the early 1990s, and many of its components reflect that era. The Chinese Space Telescope on the other hand, will be equipped with modern sensors, improved optics and cutting-edge data systems. All of this translates to a telescope that can potentially outperform Hubble in many ways while also benefiting from the unique capability of human maintenance via Tiangong. It's a smart strategy that shows how China is thinking several steps ahead with their orbital infrastructure. The pairing of the telescope with Tiangong is an example of strategic planning that could pay off in a big way. Maintenance is a major issue with space telescopes. The reason the Hubble lasted so long is because astronauts were able to fix and upgrade it multiple times. But with current telescopes like James Webb, which is parked over a million kilometers from Earth, repairs are virtually impossible. China is essentially going back to a more serviceable model, but with modern tools and knowledge. That could be a game-changer for long-term space observation projects and might position China as a serious player in space science for the next few decades. All these developments reflect China's growing confidence and capability in space. They are no longer just catching up, they're starting to lead in certain areas. From space station expansion to advanced telescopes and lunar missions, China is creating a comprehensive ecosystem in low Earth orbit. Meanwhile, other players like Rocket Lab and NASA are moving forward with their own ambitious plans. Rocket Lab, for instance, is quickly emerging as a serious competitor to SpaceX, and NASA has new challenges to overcome with its robotic moon missions. We'll get into those topics in the next part, but for now, it's clear that China's space program is entering a new era, one defined by innovation, strategy, and global collaboration. Meanwhile, an incredibly exciting development is underway in the world of space observation. A new camera with a staggering resolution of 2.5 million megapixels is currently being prepared for launch. This camera is designed to capture distant galaxies with unprecedented clarity, but its primary purpose is far more ambitious, investigating the mysterious force known as dark matter and how it influences the evolution of the universe. The mission, scheduled to launch in December 2026, will provide scientists with a new tool to study the structure of the cosmos and perhaps finally offer clues about the universe's most elusive substance. Shifting our focus from observation to innovation, let's talk about Rocket Lab. This aerospace company based in New Zealand has rapidly gained international attention since its first test flight in 2017. Initially specializing in small satellite launches using their highly reliable electron rocket, Rocket Lab is now taking a bold step forward. The company has announced an ambitious plan to enter the heavyweight ring and compete directly with SpaceX. To achieve this, they are developing a completely new kind of rocket, one that could become the cheapest and most flexible space launch vehicle ever created. This new rocket is called Neutron, and it represents Rocket Lab's attempt to redefine what a commercial rocket can do. Neutron is a medium-lift, reusable rocket designed not only for space missions but also for high-speed cargo delivery on Earth. Its design is unlike anything currently flying. For instance, it uses a two-stage configuration like most rockets, but the second stage is uniquely tucked inside the main booster, resembling a Russian nesting doll. This clever design helps reduce complexity and improve reusability, one of Neutron's standout features in an increasingly crowded aerospace market. Another groundbreaking feature of the Neutron rocket is its integrated payload fairings. Instead of discarding these fairings like most rockets do, Neutron keeps them attached to the booster. They open like a clam shell to release the second stage and then close back up before the booster lands. This allows the rocket to return in nearly the same configuration it had at launch. Recently, Rocket Lab tested this mechanism and the results were impressive. The clamshell fairing operated smoothly, giving us a real-world glimpse at what this rocket could look like in action once operational. The aim here is complete reusability. 
Rocket Lab wants to recover and reuse as much of Neutron as possible without compromising its performance. In theory, Neutron could offer a launch capacity similar to the Falcon 9 by SpaceX but with the added bonus of more streamlined recovery and faster turnaround. While it won't have the raw power of SpaceX's massive Starship, its flexibility and efficiency make it a compelling option for frequent and cost-effective launches. This could be especially attractive for commercial operators, governments, and even the military, all of whom are watching Rocket Lab's progress very closely. In fact, Neutron has already caught the attention of the United States Air Force. The rocket has been selected for a potential mission that could change the game for military logistics. The idea is simple yet futuristic. Use Neutron for point-to-point -point cargo transport here on Earth. Instead of launching into orbit, the rocket would carry payloads across the planet in under an hour and land at a designated location. If that sounds familiar, it's because SpaceX's Starship was also envisioned for this very purpose. But Starship's early years are booked with Lunar and Mars missions, which leaves a unique opening for Neutron. This opportunity is huge for Rocket Lab. If successful, Neutron could become the second rocket in the world capable of executing these rapid Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport missions, right behind Starship. And given how stretched SpaceX's resources will be with its ambitious interplanetary goals, the Air Force sees real potential in having a reliable, reusable alternative. This contract not only validates Rocket Lab's vision but also gives the company a crucial foothold in a high-stakes arena. It's a strategic move by both the military and Rocket Lab, one that could shape the future of terrestrial cargo delivery. In another corner of the space world, NASA has been grappling with the uncertain fate of the Viper rover. Short for Volatile's Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, Viper was designed to explore the moon's south pole in search of water and other vital resources. The mission was considered a major step toward establishing a long-term human presence on the lunar surface. But despite the rover being about 95% complete, the mission was abruptly cancelled last summer. The reason? Budget overruns and delays in its landing system, which forced NASA to reevaluate the project. At NASA, there's a strict rule. If any program exceeds its budget by more than 30%, it must be reviewed by Congress before it can continue. Viper's delay in launch, caused by issues with the lander being developed by a private partner, Astrobotic, meant NASA would have to keep paying its team for another year just to monitor a completed rover. That extra cost tipped the mission over the 30% threshold. When the proposal went before Congress, lawmakers didn't see enough justification to continue spending and voted to shut the mission down, effectively shelving a nearly finished rover. This decision left NASA in a tricky spot. They now had a half-billion-dollar rover sitting around, essentially ready to fly but without a confirmed ride to the moon. Not wanting to waste the effort, NASA tried something new, they started offering the Viper mission to private companies. The idea was to see if any commercial entity would be willing to foot the bill to land and operate the rover on the moon's surface. The cost? Somewhere between backslash $150 million and backslash $200 million, covering launch, landing and surface operations. It was a bold move, essentially putting Viper up for auction. But selling a lunar rover turned out to be much harder than expected. Over the next three months, NASA failed to attract any serious bidders. No private company was willing, or able, to take on the financial burden of launching and managing a moon mission at that scale. So, in a quiet but telling move, NASA officially withdrew Viper from the market. They issued a statement saying they would now explore alternative approaches to achieving the rover's mission goals. While it's unclear what those alternatives will be, the agency made it clear that Viper's story isn't over yet. As of now, the rover still sits in storage, fully built and waiting. NASA hasn't given up on its purpose, which is to search for water and usable resources in the moon's permanently shadowed regions. Viper was designed with this goal in mind, and that goal still holds enormous scientific and strategic value. The rover could be vital for future crewed missions, potentially locating ice deposits that could be used for life support or even rocket fuel. What's needed now is a creative solution, a new partner, new funding, or perhaps a revised mission plan that will finally take Viper to its intended destination.